Oh, hello everyone, welcome back to another episode. Um, today, you are with me again, <laughs> your public health specialist, JJ. And I'm going to be talking about sugar and the effect that it has on the body. So stick around to the end, I'll give some tips and tricks on how to treat it, when to eat it, what kinds, and how it um, affects your body. So first, uh, what is it? So it's uh, a molecule with a different ring structure. So there are hundreds of different kinds of what we call sugar. So the most common one is glucose, we get fructose, ribose, maltose, maltodextrin, sucrose. So there are really hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different structures. So it has the little ring and then different um, attachments all over the place. So it depends on the structure, what it does in the body, how it functions, how it works. Oh, and another one that's that's quite common these days, ketos, <laughs> ketones. So sugar has gotten a bad name, but sugar is, all sugar is not equal, put it that way. All sugar is definitely not equal. Um, the table sugar that you find, that you can buy in bags, the syrups, uh, high fructose corn syrup, uh, cane syrup, coconut syrup, you get all different kinds of sugars. Those are the concentrated forms of the isolated um, crystallized or liquid form of that sugar. Uh, it's uh, just that specific glucose or fructose molecule, ribose, whatever it might be, whatever kind of sugar. It's the isolated, purified, refined form so generally when people talk about sugar that is what they are talking about but it gets misconstrued and used for all kinds of sugar where there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different ones so when people say sugar is bad i would like to think that they would refer to this purified crystallized um, form of sugar and yes that one is not great for us and i will explain why so this sugar in its crystallized form, um, I was doing some research, I have it here open on my, my computer, that I can read you some of the different ones, the different effects of this purified, refined sugar, uh, triggers gut dysbiosis, metabolic inflammation, cardiac arrhythmia, um, impairs glucose and lipid metabolism, promotes inflammation. So intestinal inflammation so this is just some of the articles that i see <laughs> open here that i've i've read through and gone through so this purified form of sugar does not go well in our bodies it does not it's not accommodated <laughs> well so when this purified form of sugar comes in your body gets like a fright and it has to pump in um lots of insulin because your this purified form of sugar is very easy to break down and it immediately pull into your bloodstream and it spikes your your blood sugar so meaning there's a lot of little sugar molecules in your blood and how these molecules look is they are very big first of all and they are very spiky and they can cause damage in your little arteries so the first place where they can cause damage is your eyes and your peripheral nervous system where you have lots of tiny veins so you can think of all your different organs where you have the smallest veins your eyes your kidneys your extremities um, some of your other organs as well your heart is sensitive your brain so all of these um, when the, you have had the refined sugar, these molecules go into your bloodstream and they go everywhere and they can cause damage and this causes inflammation. So wherever they cause damage, the inflammation will go. And the inflammation in the, the Latin is itis. So anything with an itis is inflammation. Rhinitis, um, hepatitis, bronchitis, carditis epicarditis um what's some other ones uh <laughs> my mind has suddenly gone blank but all itises 
arthritis, okay, all of those itis, all of them, it's inflammation. So it's caused by an inflammatory response of your body wanting to repair. But if it's not able to repair and if there's damage all the time, then it has to, it becomes a more chronic inflammation, which will then lead to more and more damage. So it repairs and there's more damage. It repairs, more damage, repairs, more damage. So this is also the, the theory for heart disease and why plaques form atherosclerosis, why plaques form in your, your arteries around your heart, is there's damage, your body tries to repair it. Then there's damage and your body tries to repair it. And the cholesterol is what it's trying to use as a plug to repair the holes. So then it adds and adds and adds and adds and adds and it forms this plaque and it blocks your arteries. So inflammation is a cause of disease. It's a real big problem. So things that cause inflammation, you would generally want to try and decrease and not have in your diet every single day. You try to limit them. So sugar and this purified form of it, the crystallized or the refined purified form is the danger. <clears throat> So it comes in, it goes into your bloodstream and then your body uh, gets a shock and it wants to get it out because it's too much. So it, no, your body realizes it's causing, causing damage, it's giving you the spike of energy. You're going, oh, ooh, the sugar high, or you have so much energy and your brain is kind of going crazy. Then your body is pumping in insulin to pull out the glucose molecules. So it pulls out the glucose molecules and it stores them. So this is what also drives adiposity or fat deposition, putting fat onto your body. Is this lots of sugar into your bloodstream, lots of insulin being um, secreted by your pancreas to get the glucose out of your blood and then it takes it into your storage. So that makes fat, that puts in fat into your body. Then your pancreas gets strained and it, it starts over time losing function because it has to do too much and then that leads can lead to type 2 diabetes so that is one hypothesis to the type 2 diabetes is that it's these spikes of glucose from the purified crystallized refined sugar molecule that's being released and your body has to pump in insulin all the time to get that out so when you are exercising, you are using that glucose. It's not going to be stored. Your body doesn't have to release so much insulin. If you are not eating so much, then it's okay. Then you're not getting that. If you are eating the, that sugar, that glucose, that fructose in a food form, like an apple, that fructose is locked into fiber. It's an intricate web. It's locked in. Your body has to work hard to get that out. So it's slow release. So release over time and it's locked into the fiber so your body can use it better. It's not this massive release all at once and then your body gets the shock. Oh, good grief, what should I do with all of this? And then it just pulls it out via insulin and stores it. And then you feel hungry again because you've taken all of this glucose out. You don't have energy, so you want more. So that's where you continue. So you eat a cookie. You have this energy and then poof, you crash because insulin has been secreted and takes all of the glucose and deposits it as, as fat. And then you have a cake and then a sweet and then a candy and it's spiking your glucose, spiking your glucose and your body is frantically taking this out and storing it as fat and then you're giving it more and giving it more. So it's doing this all the time and it puts strain on your pancreas and that can end up as then a, a type 2 diabetes. So then the sugar can also cause gut dysbiosis because it's supporting growth of some intestinal flora, some intestinal bacteria and killing off the other ones because they are starved. So then you are dis going into a dysregulation in your gut bioflora, your microflora, your, your uh, bacteria in your gut is very sensitive and it's where your health starts. I've got other videos on that as well. So the these molecules will... Um, destroy some of your villi. Your villi are like little fingers standing up and that's your absorptive surface. And the purified 
it's crystallized refined sugar will cut those off and make them shorter and you'll have less um, absorptive surface and it will make some bacteria grow so you have an overgrowth of some and no growth of others so you have this dysbiosis this dysrhythm and <clears throat> it will throw out the balance in your body and then this can also then cause inflammation in your intestinal tract and this can cause then different kinds of of troubles there as well so similar to your arteries and your veins where it can cause damage and then the repair damage repair damage repair and inflammation and um, can cause eyesight problems can cause nerve problems kidney problems this can also happen in your guts your liver your pancreas so all over it can cause um, damage and trouble so I've talked a little about the insulin and the fat storage, whereas your insulin will come and, and take the glucose and remove it from your bloodstream and then it has to go somewhere. So it will deposit it and store it as, as energy for later. So in your fat, so your pack on fat. When sugar is bound to fiber, so the sugar molecule, the hundreds of different kinds, when they are in a fiber, fibrous network and bound up with other molecules, it's harder to to digest it's harder to just pull out it doesn't get straight into your bloodstream there it takes a little bit of time and it needs to be unraveled and it's a slow release and your body can then slowly use it and send it to the places that it needs to go and it's not this massive um influx of sugars glucose all over your body and it's everywhere and it's like a a drug coursing through your body so when it's in, in its fibrous form, its natural form, it does not cause the damage. It does not cause all of these problems because the fiber slows it down. It's, it helps it to modulate the response. And it's, a, it's not purified either. It's not this refined, pure crystal form. It's got more nuanced and more nuanced structure and it's bound to other things and you have your your different vitamins and minerals and your riboflavins uh, your um, phytonutrients that are all locked in and bound together and all of these work together in a symbiotic relationship when they go into your di digestive tract and it's a more of a dance rather than a heavy metal <laughs> glucose everywhere so when it's bound to other things it's much kinder to your body and it can be released and can be used as it is required you can look at it in the same way with a poppy poppies are used to make morphine or it's used to make um, heroin when it is purified and taken down to this core base product you can eat poppy seeds and you will not have that response so you can see the stark difference between the natural form and the purified extracted refined kind of <laughs> um, crystallized or liquefied form of something to the natural one the natural one will not give you that massive um, effect because it's not in its pure refined form. It's bound up together with loads and loads of other molecules and fiber and fat and protein. It's got all other kind, all other things bound in, locked in together, which then helps your body to respond in a better way to it. <clears throat> so if you look at corn, and high fructose corn syrup they are miles and miles apart from how they look in a molecular structure in the way that they're bound together high fructose corn syrup is a pure extracted refined syrup from corn and you need hundreds and hundreds of corn cobs to make a little bit of that sugar it's the same with a crystallized one that you add to whatever you eat or in baking or whatever it's a far cry from the natural form that you find in the coconuts or the cane uh the sugar cane or wherever that sugar might come from bamboo i've seen <clears throat> so the way in which it's extracted and purified and <clears throat> put through loads and loads of processes to get to this pure 
refined form makes that your body gets a shock when it comes in because it does not come in that that um, kind of different structure with loads of things connected to it and bound up in a different way <clears throat> so the purified refined put through hundreds of processes to get to this end product that is not so great for your body because every single part will be absorbed and will just shoot into your system whereas when it's bound up in like an apple only parts of it are absorbed a lot of it comes out again the other side whereas it with sugar you take a teaspoon of sugar your body's going to boom absorb every single part of that every single drop will go in and be used so that <clears throat> that's another difference about how much your body actually uses and how much it can let go so how to treat this refined sugar well limit it use it as little as possible and use the better of the bad options so the natural one that's from a natural source <laughs> that is not taken through so many processes so brown sugar that has not been bleached that has not had lots of things done to it as much as the white sugar so the brown sugar will be better look for a more natural one high fructose corn syrup is kind of at the at the bad end of the spectrum where the brown sugar is more to the higher um better part and then if you can go to something like a coconut that also moves up it's a little better as well so you always want to go to the more natural form of something rather than the highly refined or purified or something that's made more simple you want the more complex bound up form of it so i hope this has helped i hope this has been informative and it has given you some information on sugar the different forms of sugar how it's it works in your body how it interacts with the different organs and how it relates to to inflammation as well so as always stay healthy and to god be the glory